Hey Yag Nation, it's Haroon here. We're with Chris Andrechuk in um, Ward 7. Sorry, I almost got that wrong. Um, so, you know, we're Yag Nation. We're trying to get the youth involved. Yeah. We know that you're a young guy and, you know, you have a pretty cool backstory. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you came into uh, Ward 7 politics and how you got involved with the community yeah. and just a little bit about yourself, I guess. Yeah, for sure. What well, it, it uh, you know, I've been saying it started 10 years ago, but it actually started well, almost 18 years ago here in the community of North Mount. So uh, I moved out when I was really young, moved out when I was 17, and uh, I got my first social work type job here in North Mount. I worked in a group home. I worked with some young guys who had developmental disabilities, and that's where it all started. You know, my love of uh, Northeast Edmonton, my love of North, uh, of Ward 7, but also my love of um, giving back to the community and community involvement and uh, uh, being part of, um, well, being part of something bigger, being a social worker. So that's really what it started, and uh, that's what launched me into my social work career. So I started at Grant McEwen a year and a half after working here in North Mount. Awesome, so um, I guess you've been working with youth for a long time. Um, uh, as a young guy, you know, we also want to see a higher voter turnout with yeah. young people. That's kind of the whole yeah. point of Yag Nation. October 16th, guys go out there and vote. Yeah. And so what have you done and what are you planning to do to try and get more young people involved with the community? Well, youth voter turnout uh, could make all the difference this election. Um, so 63,000 people live in Ward 7. And uh, last time, 30, just over 30% of people voted. And that was with a really exciting mayoral race. We don't know, like, you know, the pollsters are saying that the low voter turnout's gonna be low. We're not sure. We wanna surprise them. And, and I think that we're going to here in Ward 7 because, I don't know, I, I've been knocking on doors for a year and a half and I feel there's a desire for something different. You know, people are ready for change. As cliche as that sounds, people are really ready for change. And this is the time. Like, we have an opportunity to do right by Ward 7. We have an opportunity to do different. I'm a young guy. I'm raising my family here in this community. So in a lot of ways, uh, you know, I'm hoping that that connects with youth. I hope that connects with your viewership. Who uh, you know who themselves live in this community, who themselves are raising uh, uh, young families, and feel that they deserve better, feel that they deserve better representation, they deserve lower crime rates, uh, they deserve more interesting and more complete neighborhoods. So that's what I represent, and that's what I want for this community. So you've been door knocking for a year and a half? Yeah, yeah. So, wow. Well, okay, I'm going to let you in on a secret. We actually started working on this right after the last municipal election, but I officially announced my intentions about a year and a half ago, uh, and then we launched the campaign just earlier this summer. So you know. Very few times do you unseat an incumbent. So in these w open wards, uh, you've got a lot of people who are who are uh, who are running, and it's, it's very interesting. But in you know in, in wards where you have an incumbent, well, it's just tougher. It's tougher. Oh, yeah. So if you if you want if you want to represent the community, if you feel like you have good ideas, if you feel like you could do something different, you got to put the work in. So I've actually taken a month and a half unpaid leave. Uh, we've got a young family. I've taken a month and a half unpaid leave, and I've just been canvassing and door knocking and attending events and getting my ideas and my thinking out there full time. Amazing. Um, so, you know, we're in Ward 7. I'm actually from Ward 9. I don't know the issues, the yeah. biggest issues in Ward 7. Yeah. So if you could tell like our viewers who may also not know what to be uh, cognizant of in this yeah. upcoming election, what you think are the biggest issues and how you plan to solve them. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that there are two major defining issues this election. And the first one is Northlands. Uh, Northlands Coliseum Council made the decision just very recently to, uh, well, to turn the lights off and uh, they turned the lights off without a plan in place and that is really dangerous for our community. Um, you know, I've got an analogy. Turning the lights off on Coliseum without a plan in place is kind of like putting your exercise bike in your garage and saying, yeah, you know, I'll get to that one day. I'm going to take that back out. Well, it's just going to stay in your garage. The light should have not gone off on Northlands without a plan in place. This is going to impact property values without question. This is going to impact crime. This is going to impact people's feelings of safety on the LRT. It's going to impact the overall revitalization of our community. So priority number one, when I'm elected, October 17th, I'm going to push hard for the best possible redevelopment of that site because we do deserve better. And I'm really excited about that area, man. Like you've got LRT, you've got Borden Park, you've got uh, the River Valley, you've got the revitalization of 118th Ave, which I've been a part of for a very long time. That could be the best community in Edmonton, but we got to get it right. So I want to get it right. Number two is problem properties. So um, this is a major issue. It's a major driver of crime. Uh, you are, if you're going to interview all the candidates, you're not going to find one who says that this isn't an issue. But I'm the only candidate so far who's put forward a plan that is different than just the same. Everyone's saying we need more police. You know, we need more enforcement. You could throw every police officer in the city you want at this problem. It's not going to solve it. We need to think very creatively. And uh, my plan's up on the website. I'm calling it the sunshine approach if you're interested. Awesome. So if you have any last words for all of our viewers at Yag Nation, um, you know, now's the time to let them know, yeah. you know, tell them to vote as well. Yeah, please, absolutely. please tell them to vote. Well, I'm going to tell you to vote twice, so I'm going to tell you to vote to start. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm a dad. Uh, I'm a young father. I'm raising my family here in Ward 7. I've got a little girl, she's two. Uh, we're expecting a boy right after the election. Uh, this is my home. I'm really proud of this part of Edmonton. I'm fiercely protective about this part of Edmonton. It means a really uh, a great deal to me. We have 63,000 people in Ward 7. And if 5,000 people vote for me, I'll win. Now that's kind of exciting, but it's also kind of dismal. 63,000 people and if 5,000 people vote, it could change this election. I'm really going to encourage you, if you're watching this, to make the effort. The City of Edmonton is doing such a great job trying to get people to vote. You know, you can vote October 16th, but you can also vote before that. October 4th, you can start voting. You can vote at Clairview Rec Centre. I will personally drive you to the polls if you have uh, transportation issues, even if you don't vote for me. I will personally drive you to the polls uh, because voter turnout is it's so incredibly important. Uh, the decisions we make in the next four years will either hurt this community or will transform this community. And I want to be your leader, so please vote for me on October 16th. Awesome, so yeah. it was great meeting you, Chris. We well, got to have had you, you on, our, on our show. Um, Yeg Nation, remember, never forget, October 16th, get out there and vote. It's been great uh, being here in Ward 7. We'll see you around.